All right, Coach, after Saturday's game, um, several of us were talking about it, reflecting on it, uh, kind of the impression we were left with was just how physical your defense played. What have you done to elevate the physical nature that your team's playing with this year? Well, I think collectively what the whole program's done uh, starts with the players' commitment to, uh, you know, to, to come to commit to the off season and, and just the whole spring, uh, you know, training that they've done, and then the summer off, the summer strength conditioning program. They came back. I think it's a lesson learned from last year's season was just how physical this league was. So we knew that we had to increase our physicality and uh, to be able to handle it through this whole season. So uh, then you go into camp. In camp, we uh, nobody wants to have injuries happen. So sometimes you. You can run your camp so on a, such a defensive mindset. We're trying to protect everything. This this fall, what we just chose to do is say, hey, let's just let them play football. Let's be physical in camp. And you know, we came out of it pretty healthy. And so, you know, it's it's kind of a mindset that you you know you got to be the most physical team out there. And so we're striving to be. It's a it's a goal of ours. Coach, your three quarterbacks into a two and one season. How yeah. valuable is that depth? And is that depth? Indicative of the depth of your entire program. Well, they're, uh, now you're talking about the physicality of it again, so, right? So you're trying to do all you can to protect people, um, to keep them healthy. You always want to keep your quarterbacks healthy, but this year, particularly having three seniors at quarterback, um, it's, it's it's priceless. So, um, you know, the quarterback position, for, because of what we want to do, gun run stuff, but then also, I mean, so those injuries happen with just just from freakish things that happen just because football. Unfortunately, injuries are happen in football. We don't want anybody to get hurt, whether our opponent or ourselves. Uh, but the next man's got to be ready to go. And in this case, uh, Justin McPherson stepped up and managed the game well and, and did what he needed to do to, to help lead his team to a victory. And last year, you had Humboldt in Central Washington back-to-back -back at home. Uh, those couple of games kind of represented a step up in how the program performed in this new conference. Six games into a conference winning streak now, how have you been able to keep your team focused on the immediate task that's now turned into a pattern of consistent success? Well, I think consistent success comes from uh, consistent preparation. And for what we do, our mindset is uh, just about taking this win each day. Uh, we have, you know, obviously win today is our big mantra we have within our locker room. And so what we want to be is a champion in, uh, in every moment that's in front of us. And that, that means it's the practice that we're going to have, it's the film study we're going to have. And so for these guys, um, we've always talked about that you don't over, over, ever overlook an opponent or ever overlook an opportunity to play the game of college football because it's very rare that you have a chance to do it. Um, and the opportunities to put a helmet on, whether it's in practice or in a game, are, are, are extremely finite. So uh, for our guys, you know, they, they take that commitment to heart and that preparation and that they value the moment. So um, and it's one of those things we're going to constantly just beat on, just that, hey, we have to be uh, the very best with just today what we have instead of uh, just looking forward to game day. Everybody likes game day. You know? Coach, last week, Cougar fans finally got to see mm -hmm. their football team. And with that, some of the u new uniform combinations, just talk about having so many options, what kind, mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of what's – football is going towards nowadays and talk about how cool it is to have so many options and what, what do we expect to see this week? Uh, well, I tell you this, uh, the options are really cool. It's, it's, it's always exciting. Uh, I think we're, you know, it's fun being a Nike school and to be able to have the different uniform combinations to, to do just to, to look great out there, to play well, to represent the school and how great the school is. And so I'm not in charge of the uniform combination, thankfully. Uh, so I'll, I don't know. It's going to be a surprise. So we'll find out when the man that does make the decision makes it. And we will uh, we'll kind of be able to chance to see us coming out of the tunnel. We'll know what we have. But it's a lot of fun. you know. And, and college football is a blast. And the uniform combination, um, you know, for some old school uh, purists may say it's silly. For me, I, I think it's great. I mean, hey, let's go out there, have fun with this thing. And, and uh, it looks sharp. I thought we looked great last, on the last Saturday night, you know. The players seem to have fun with it and enjoy it. And we want to treat, take uh, we want to take good care of them. I mean, this is this football experience that the, a player is going to get here is top notch. I mean, when you're talking about dreaming about college football, um, they're going to come whatever that dream is, and they're going to it's going to surpass it here. And I mean, a lot of people try to put so much stock in well, hey, Division One or where you're where where you're at. Okay, so I tell you, if you come to this university, you get first class people first class facilities and the uniforms don't fall short of it as well. 
And so, you know, our, our players are getting uh, just an amazing fo college football experience, and I'm proud to be a part of that. Now, the, the GNAC race is kind of upside down from where a lot of people mm -hmm. projected it to be at this point in the year. What are your impressions of the league so far? Are you at all surprised by what's transpired? Well, I'm not surprised in just because I, I, what I learned last year and what I think our, our staff learned is this league uh, is a very tough league to win. Um, you know, having watched a lot of other film of other, other leagues out there, teams from other leagues, I think there's more parity in other leagues for our, for our um, uh, excuse me, there's more of a, it's a there's more uh, dominance in certain leagues and you got some, some hey, just gimme games in other leagues. For ours, the, the parity that happens here is just, um, I mean, anybody can win. And this thing's so wide open. Any team can beat anybody, and that's what we've really learned this last fall. And now we're, so that's what goes back to the whole mindset, just take this one game at a time. If it's a league game in front of you, that's the big game. So it doesn't matter who you're playing. You've got a chance to, to get after it. It's a league opponent. You better put your best foot forward. Last week was also your first home game. Talk about what it's like to play in front of your home fans. Oh, it's so much fun. I mean, it's just standing there. Just the noise is so loud out there. I think it's, it's you know, I think part of uh, the, the rub is how loud it is. I mean, it's great, though. I love it. And, and then the, found, the fans are loud. The zoo is making tons of noise. Uh, uh, I, I think it goes back to the whole college football experience. When you come to Zoo of the Pacific, it, you're getting the full, the full boat about everything you've dreamed about. And so our fans, especially our, excuse me, our, our players, especially the ones that was their first home game ever, Afterwards, we tried to tell them how loud it was going to be, and it, they didn't really believe it. So after the fact, I said, like, I told you to be loud. Like, man, I uh, get it. Because we had some substitution errors on special teams where um, they weren't echoing it enough in there. And we had some guys miss, uh, miss the call of what special team was up. And thankfully, we didn't have to burn any timeouts. But it's loud. And that's it's a credit to our fans. I don't want it to change. Uh, it's going to get even louder as this thing keeps growing. And what have you seen from Central Washington on film so far, and what kind of game do you expect this week? And any guarantees? <laughs> no guarantees. I tell you this: it guarantee that Central Washington is a, a tough physical team, um, consistent to who, what their brand of football has been. Is their O line is uh, is extremely large, physical, uh, tough guys. Uh, I thought, I, you know, once again, running back wise, they're able to fill the their barn with running backs that can really dice you up. Um, they always seem to have a good quarterback, and defensively, they're very active. And uh, I thought I think it's one of the better secondaries in the, in the league. So um, there, it's a tough opponent. We've got our hands full. Uh, we're gonna have to put a, go put our hard hat on and go to work and just prepare the best game plan that can help us uh, be in the position to be successful come Saturday night. And then for Central Washington, motivation-wise, uh, you know, obviously the guarantee was a great story for you guys mm -hmm. last year, and it wasn't. I think intentional, but um, mm. it turned out to be a fun story from the Azusa Pacific angle, yeah. and it was the start of something great, which was a six-game conference winning streak. Between now and then, you've kind of gone from being the, you know, um, an afterthought in the GNAC race mm -hmm. uh, from where you were last year to now um, you're a circle game on the calendar for a lot of teams, yeah. and especially for Central Washington, given last year, given right. how the season has started this year. Right. Uh, talk about that motivation and how you deal with uh, maybe a change in expectations uh, for your team. Well, I tell you, one, I know it's, we are a circle game, and I think that's, that's a great place to be. I think that you want your program to be in that position. I don't think, I mean, if, if you want to be successful, if you want to have that national dominance of a program, you're always going to be a circle game, so you, you embrace that. The other thing, side of the coin, is that... Um, it doesn't change, though, in, in the fact of um, how you prepare. I mean, you need to make sure, uh, as, a, as a coaching staff and as a player, you've got to work yourself the hardest to prepare no matter what. And that's a sign of building a champion person. And so that's what we want to strive to do here, to do here. And I think we're doing it. Um, so with Central Washington and the history behind them, I just think it's going to be a good physical game. I think they're, they're you know, it's a, they're fighting just as hard for a league uh, championship as anyone else is in this league. And I think what it does for all of our fans, it makes a GNAC game just uh, just a fun game to be a part of. You're going to see some great football. Um, you know, I know the fans like the nail biters and stuff, but obviously, you know, as a coach, you'd like to just, hey, just run the table and go. But I just know it's a physical game in Central Washington is uh, one of the one of the better teams in this whole league and so we're proud to be able to play with them. 
And then the last thing, uh, you're participating in Coach to Cure MD mm -hmm. program this week. Explain what that program means to you personally, how this in event impacts your coaching staff and your team on game day. Well, Coach to Cure, uh, they, we help battle Duchenne disease. And where the, the thing is, this silly game of football has got a lot of eyeballs on it. And every Saturday, the nation uh, will have eyeballs on it. And, and you know, there's people on both sides of the fence about, hey, is that, is that justifiable, whatever. But, he, but either way, those eyeballs will be there. So um, in the Coach to Cure program, we, we all the coaches will wear this across the country. The American Football Coaches Association does a great job of supporting it. And we're hoping that it can bring some attention to a disease that affects uh, a bunch of young boys that they didn't ask for it. They didn't ask for it. So our guys get a chance to go and play football. Um, they'll never get a chance to play football or run and do some things. And so we're trying to uh, just coach it up and try to find a cure for this disease. So uh, I know this is that uh, if you text CURE to 90999, uh, you can make a five dollar donation and I think it's it's well worth it because the disease needs more research and needs all the resources it can get because <clears throat> if that's a if that's your boy you're gonna fight hard like a warrior to do whatever you can so if we could be a part of this in a small effort great let's do it great thanks coach all thank right, you thank you